local news matters for Carolina's family. This is 7 News Daybreak. Good Saturday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Stephanie Borman in for Kim. Storm Team 7 meteorologist Jackie Brown is standing by in the Weather Center with our forecast first. All right, good morning. Well, higher elevations in the mountains are still seeing that winter weather advisory, although that moisture is tapering off. So we are uh, starting to see things uh, clear out a bit. Did see some areas of snow, but still ice and gusty winds are a, a concern uh, through this morning, although those winds also will die down as we kind of zoom out there. Uh, Things looking pretty good for the rest of the area. We'll see a lot more sunshine. It's cold outside this morning, though. Lots of 30s on the board. A little bit of a wind kicking in, too. So uh, just keep that in mind. Over the next seven hours, we are going to see plenty of sunshine for today, especially in the upstate. The mountains, a little bit more cloud coverage. We'll break down tomorrow. A few isolated showers are possible. And your Christmas forecast all coming up. Stephanie. Thanks, Jackie. The families of super, super bike motorsport victims were in court on Friday, and they got a chance to speak directly to the killer who changed their lives forever. It's been a year and a half since Todd Colehead pleaded guilty to seven counts of murder. The families of three of the four victims from 2003 took the stand one by one. They made statements, spoken from the heart, and asked questions with no want for answers. But when Colehead tried to respond, the judge told him he could not speak. Does he literally think he's going to say something that I really care about? Not a chance. This won't be the last time we see Cole Hepp in court. Other family members of the victims like Melissa Brockman and Chuck Carver are still waiting their own civil hearing. A ruling on Friday's proceeding would likely come sometime after Christmas. Bond was again denied for a woman accused of driving drunk, then hitting and killing a man who was on a tractor. This is video from Tara Mahan's last bond hearing in August. She's been in jail since June. Friday's hearing was held to ask a judge to reduce Mahan's bond from no bond to fixed amount. That request was denied. Highway Patrol says Wesley Robinson was driving his tractor on Fleming Mill Road in Lawrence when Mahan hit him from behind. Asheville police are looking for someone who robbed a bank. It happened at the BBNT on Merriman Avenue around 3 o'clock Friday. Police say the man in these pictures pulled out a gun during the crime and fled on foot after the robbery. No one was hurt. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 828-255-5050. We now know the name of a woman who died in a head-on crash Thursday in Pickens County. It happened on Fars Bridge Road in Easley. The coroner's office says 35-year-old Carrie Jean Hall died while in surgery. Two other people were hurt. Plans may be in the works for a new training facility for Greenville County deputies. The sheriff's office says it's a major upgrade. The Greenville County Sheriff's Office opened up the facility 27 years ago after they seized the 62-acre lot from a drug dealer. Although the building is old, the major problem the sheriff says is space explaining that oftentimes classrooms are overflowing with people. They are workers sitting in the hallway in their desks. They have no private rooms to talk to the deputies who come up there about training. They're sitting out in the middle of the floor talking to everybody. County Council is in charge of the budget. Chairman Butch Curver tells us that a new training center is doable and that they're looking into replacing the current one within the next year to year and a half. More deputies on the streets of Cherokee County trying to stop Grinches from ruining the holidays. The Sheriff's Office Grinch Patrol is in its eighth year. We rode along with Sergeant Nicholas Federico to get a closer look. An extra eight to ten deputies are on the streets through Christmas Eve to prevent burglaries and larcenies. Sheriff Mueller says those crimes go up around this time of year. He says they offer overtime to off-duty deputies and pull others from various departments. Uh, nothing more disheartening than to go to a home that's been burglarized and a family has lost you know, all the presents underneath the Christmas tree. The Sheriff's Office says they also patrol communities that deputies don't typically frequent and outlying areas near the state line. Sheriff Mueller says Grinch patrols have helped reduce those crimes over the few last few years. Before you hit the open road, open the hood and inspect your car to ensure you'll make it home safely for the holidays. Today marks the official start of the year-end holiday travel period, and AAA says a record 4.7 million South Carolinians will be driving to their destination this holiday season. 
Auto repair shop owner Frank Jackson says with so much excitement to make it home for the holidays, there's one thing most people forget to inspect until it's too late. Pressure is a big deal too, so we're usually looking at tire pressures and especially the spare tire pressure, which nobody ever thinks about until you're sitting on the side of the road and it's not sufficient. According to the State Department of Public Safety, between Christmas and New Year's last year, there were a total of 12 fatal crashes in South Carolina. If you do run into any car trouble while on the highway, just dial star HP from your phone for help. North Carolina ski resorts are up and running just in time for Christmas. Chief photojournalist Jason Parker went to Sapphire Valley Ski Resort, where there's lots of fun to have for all ages. All right, this is the time not to fall. Look good. <laughs> it's a Norman Rockwell setting here. Um, it's family orientated, small, no lines, no waiting. Yeah. <laughs> We hadn't been snowboarding in about four years, and uh, so we were able to jump right back into it and practice some stuff on the slopes that we haven't been able to do at some of the uh, yeah. bigger places. Yeah. This is where if you want to have little kids or not so little kids, but you all want to ski together, uh, this is a great place to come. We have one run. Uh, our main run is 1,600 feet with a 200-foot vertical drop. We have a bunny slope right back here. If you just want to have a little fun and go snow tubing, we have a 300-foot tubing run with a 60-foot drop. But if you just want to have a good time, easy skiing, family time, you want your kids to learn to ski, you want them to, to be better at skiing, this is the perfect place to come. Again, that was Chief Photojournalist Jason Parker. Here's something fun you can do with the family tonight. Check out the Holiday Light Safari at Holly Wild Animal Park in Walford. Admire the displays as you drive through the nearly 100-acre animal park, then check out the animals in the barn at Santa's Village. Hours tonight, 6 to 10, and tomorrow, they're open from 6 to 9. It lasts through January 5th. And this weekend, check out the Upstate's biggest holiday interactive light show. It's held at the Greenville Pickens Speedway in Easley. It's still going on this weekend and lasts through New Year's Eve. They have over 100 new light displays, Christmas carols, a petting zoo, and ice skating. This weekend, you can even visit with Santa. Hours are from 5.45 to 11 today and Sunday from 5.45 to 10 p.m. Tickets available at the door or online.